we still in the, the notes packet? Yep, yeah, we're in our notes packet. Same one. So let's get out and get going here. And this is the of our notes. We are going to be having a quiz, a single problem graphing quiz, so a single problem like this, uh, next time we're together. So we all we're going to do today is graph. So let's get our stuff out, let's get ready to go, and let's do a quick review of what we did last time we were together. When we sketched the Zion, pay attention, Chase, pay attention. When we sketch these, we need a list of stuff. And I didn't write that down here, but I will on your quiz and on your test. I will write down the list of stuff to remind you. We need vertical asymptotes. We need horizontal asymptotes. We need holes. We need y-intercepts and x-intercepts. So we need these five things to be graphed, and then we'll just fill in whatever shape we think is supposed to be there based on these points. So we are on page 20 doing problem D. Thank you. So when I look at problem D, I don't think I'm going to jump in and start graphing it right away. Do you? What do you think we might do before we start graphing? Factor it. Remember, if you're going to have one of these, you have to be able to factor and then cancel, right? So let's see if that happens. How does the top factor? X minus 5, X plus 1. Remember, 
when you foil it, you have to get a negative five on the end. So it's gotta be a negative five and a positive one to give you a negative four in the middle. Now, what about the bottom? What do you notice about the bottom? You can take out a two. And when we take out a two, we are left with the difference of squares. So the bottom is our two, and then x minus two, x plus two. Oh, well, we did a whole bunch of factoring, but nothing canceled, which means we're not gonna have any holes. Because in order to have a hole, an open dot in your graph, you have to be able to cancel. Right? What? Yes. Now, can anybody tell me, excuse me, what we do have in there? We have a horizontal asymptote, right? Where is it? Our horizontal asymptote is at y equals one half. Now, let's review that for those of you that have forgotten. How do we know that our horizontal asymptote is y equals one half? How do we know that? Look right here. We have x squared on the top and the bottom, and that's a one x squared, and that's a two x squared. So when I compare those, I get one half, right? That's how I know the asymptotes at one half. One more time, let's review those rules. As long as the powers match, like x squared over x squared, then we just compare them, so one over two. If the one on the top is bigger, so like if that had been an x cubed, then there would be no horizontal asymptote. If the one on the bottom is bigger, like if that had been x cubed, then the horizontal asymptote is zero. Okay, what else do you remember? What else can I fill in here? Vertical asymptote, actually this time there are two of them because vertical asymptotes come from what makes the denominator equal to zero. You know from all the talk we did before about domains that the denominator cannot be zero, ever. So if you put a two into this problem, it would be illegal. And we mark illegals with asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. If you put in a negative two, it would be illegal. So we have vertical asymptotes at two and negative two. All right, what about the intercepts? What do you remember about these intercepts? I hope you remember that they are points. And whichever intercept you're looking for, the other letter is zero. So if you are looking for the y-intercept, x is going to be zero. If you are looking for the x-intercept, y is going to be zero. Now, if we go back to our equation, and this was our original right here. We can look at the original equation and put a zero in for all of the x's, okay? Now, could we do it here? Oh, absolutely, it's just gonna be a little harder there. So I'm gonna do it in the original. If I put a zero in, what do I have on the top if I put in a zero? Negative five. Negative five. What do I have on the bottom if I put in a zero? Negative eight. So I have negative five over negative eight, which is just positive five eighths. How do I get my y-intercept? I let x be zero. I just put x, zeros in for all the x's. Now, how do I get an x-intercept? I put zero in for y. So I'm gonna come over here and look at this one that's already factored and I'm gonna put zero in for y. So zero equals x minus five, x plus one, 
over 2x minus 2x plus 2. Every time kids look at that, they freak out, they miss it. That's ridiculous. This is so easy. If that's going to be zero, the only way that fraction can equal zero is if x is five or if x is negative one. In other words, your x-intersects are where the numerator is zero. The only way a fraction can be zero is if its top is zero. And the only way the top can be zero is if x is five or x is negative one. If you put in five, you're gonna get zero. If you put in negative one, you're gonna get zero. Those are your x-intercepts. So I'm gonna plot all that. I'm gonna plot five, zero, and negative one, zero, and zero, five, eighths. out here this is this is going to be a little bit different kind of graph but it, I want you to think about this for a second I want you to think about it these are asymptotes so those purple lines split this picture up into three pieces If any, now look, you got a dot right here. You have an asymptote there and an asymptote here. Does anybody have any idea what's going on, on in this piece of the picture? The right side here, this chunk right here. Anybody have a thought about what that looks like? Exactly, Corey. That looks like this. Remember, kids, these are all versions of the reciprocal function. So somewhere in them, they're going to have that reciprocal shape. When I say reciprocal function, remember that shape right there? Now, this one is complicated. This one's gonna have some other stuff in it. But it's, it always, they always have that in them somewhere. Now, let's look over here at this side. To the left here, all this. I don't think I have any points over here, do I? Hmm. Anyone have an idea what shape might be happening over here? It's this right here. That's exactly what it is. It's the other half of that. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, okay, Mrs. Ford, I, I, I sort of get it. But how do you know that it's up there? Couldn't it be down here? And the answer is no, it can't. Because see that right there? What would I call that? An x-intercept. And do I have an x-intercept there? No. And if I don't have an x-intercept there, that means I cannot cross the, there. So it can't be that one. Are there pictures where it could be that? Absolutely, but this isn't one of them because you can't cross that line. So therefore, it has to be up there on top. Now, what in the world is going on in the middle? Does anyone have any thoughts about that? You got a couple points in there. Anybody have? Well, I heard a parabola. That's not a bad guess, but I want you to tell me what, what would be wrong with that. What's wrong with that as a, as a shape? You could have one, but what? There's no x-intercept there. Now, these are connected. Absolutely, those are connected. But these can't go down like that. What, what has to happen? If they can't come down, they must go. There you go. That's what it looks like. Could it be a line? No, they are never lines. They are always curves. Always some kind of curve. Good question, but no. Could you just look at that as like, like, like the top half of the is what matches with the bottom right corner. Like, I don't know how to say it. Like where the five eighths is, that part, like if you just stopped right there, that matches with the uh, five zero on the 
Oh, oh, so you're saying like a little reciprocal function right here and then another one yeah. right here? Yeah, I mean, you can think of it like that. There's no way I'm getting that right. Well, that's why you're gonna practice. So if you end up with like coordinate spots on like the middle of the graph, will it always be a cubic function? No, the one we did last Friday or whatever day that was, um, was actually a parabola. So what is gonna depend totally on that is how, where the points are. If, if we had had another point over here, then we would have a parabola, but we didn't. So it couldn't come down, therefore it had to go up. Okay, it, they can get a little confusing, but if you remember to do these things first, and then remember that these are the only places you can cross an axis, then you really can't miss. Because every other thing I tried, I ended up crossing an axis that I wasn't allowed to. Yeah. So, in general, where's the line? Does that, why does it go straight up? Where else would it go? Well, it doesn't go straight up because it can't cross over the Y. It can't cross over the X axis. So yeah, it, it has so. to go it, somewhere. It's like either it, going to go up or it's going to go down. Why can they go straight? Because, because it can't cross the vertical asymptotes. Okay. Vertical asymptotes, kids, vertical asymptotes, remember where they come from? They come from the denominator being zero. You can't touch a vertical asymptote. So we'll Can you touch a horizontal? Yes, but you cannot touch a vertical asymptote. So if it came, if it, if it came back down, we'd know because there'd be a second point. Yeah. 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 Yep, you can only cross the axis at the intersection. All right, so here we go. Let's try the next one. Okay, so what's your thought on this one? The wall is zero. Factor. I mean, uh, we need to factor first. Uh, before we can talk about holes, bears, we gotta see if we have one. Only way we'll get one is if we can cancel and we can't. So this one's not gonna have a hole either, right? What is it gonna have? What? Where's its horizontal asymptote? Uh, no zero. It's at zero. The horizontal asymptote is at zero. Why is the horizontal asymptote at zero? The bottom is bigger than the top. When the bottom is bigger than the top, and if I were you, I might be making notes over here as we talk about this stuff. If the bottom is bigger than the top, then the asymptote's going to be at zero. All right, what else do we have? The vertical asymptote. We have, actually, we have two verticals, don't we? Where are they? X equals three and X equals negative one. Why do we have vertical asymptotes at three and negative one? Because they're the denominators. Exactly. Those are the numbers that would make the denominator equal to zero. And vertical asymptotes happen where the denominator is equal to zero. Now, something's gonna happen over here, something's gonna happen in the middle, and something's gonna happen over here. The vertical asymptotes are like fences. So you did have a big wide open space, but now you put up two fences. So you've got a yard over here, a yard in here, and a yard over here. We gotta yards. figure out what's going on in those yards. All right, what about intercepts? Do I have some of those? Y intercept, X is zero. X intercept, Y is zero. Remember, whatever the intercept is, the other letter is zero. So if you're looking for a Y intercept, X is zero. Max? Wouldn't negative five thirds be a Y intercept? Negative five thirds is the Y intercept. You are on fire, Max. Oh boy. If we look at the original problem, 
and we put a zero in for every x, the y value, y value turns out to be negative 5 thirds. Negative 5 thirds. So there is my y intercept. Perfect. Uh, so you plug in the zero and that into the original. It doesn't matter which one, but it's easier for me here because all that just drops out. Now, how do I get my x-intercepts? I make the numerator be zero. What makes my numerator zero? Negative five. Negative five. Well, where did negative five come from? Does that mean we're going to have one of those? Where the numerator is zero. Absolute value. No, these, none of these have any sharp edges. These are all nice, smooth curves. Okay? But this one is hard because I don't have very many points, and I'm not sure about this yard or this yard, but I do know what's going on here. Can anybody figure out what's going on in the middle here in this space right in here? Figure out what's going on? You gotta connect, you, you gotta draw something in there. Is there like a cubic bonus or something? Okay, now one option would be a cubing function. Now let's talk about that. Something like this. Is that a legit option for this problem? No. It is no. an option. No. Why not? One dice cross the x axis with no you point. You can't distance. cross the x axis. Uh oh. What is the only place we can cross the x axis? Right here. Okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Could it come in from the top? No. No, because it would cross, right? So it's got to come up from the bottom. It has to be a parabola. It has to be a parabola. Max, you are all over. It has so to be some kind of like... a parabola. You cannot cross the x-axis except at the intercepts. You have a point down here that's part of the picture. You have any choice. Right? Not any choice. Now, this is problematic because I don't have a single point over here. I have no idea. But would you agree it either looks like this or like this? Uh, sure. Well, it can't cross this line, right? Yeah. So it's either all up here or down here. It's got that reciprocal function look. I just don't know which one it is. How am I going to figure that out? Plot one point. This is three. Let's put four into our problem. Let's put four in for the x's. Kids, what's going to happen when I put four in? I'm going to get a number, right? And the number is either going to be positive or negative. And then I'm going to know. So I'm going to put 4 in. Here we go. If I put 4 in, I have 9 over 1 times 5. If I put 4 in for all the x's. Is that positive, a positive uh, number or a negative positive, number? Positive. positive. Which tells me that I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm going to pull it Any number bigger than three. Any number bigger than three. I have to be on that side of the asymptote. Now, could I do the same thing over here? You could. Yeah, in fact, I have to because I don't know whether this thing's coming down like this or coming up like this, do I? Up. So I'll plug in one more point. Negative so one. maybe what would this be? Negative two. Negative two. Can you so let's put. Point? I can plug in any point I want, less than negative one, except negative five. So I'm just going to put in negative two. So negative two would give me three. One. Over negative two gives me negative five. Negative one. Negative five. 
positive. That's positive. So this guy is coming in from the top. Okay. Now, kids, think about this for a second. See that dot right there? It came from this back. Is there any reason to think that's going to bounce off, or do you think it's going to go right through? It's going to go right through. How would be the only time it would bounce off? If it had a squared on it, right? It doesn't. So it's going to go right through. Now, here's the wild and wacky part. It doesn't go down, 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 because it has an asymptote. So it comes down and then comes back up like this. Where it comes down, how far it comes down, is a calculus problem that we're not ready to solve yet. We just know it comes through, but then it has to turn around and come up to its asymptote. Because if it shot down like this, that would mean there wasn't an asymptote. Asymptotes are its guidelines. So it follows its guideline off the page. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. That's probably harder than anything I would test you over. But we are in pre-calculus, so we should be able to grasp that. All right, let's try the next one. That was a hard one. Let's see what the next one looks like. I promise all we're doing today is graphing. All right. Hang on to your hats. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, why is she making me do this? And my hat's sewn off. <gasps> That's good. Somebody's following the rules back there. Good work. Okay. All right, so here we go. X squared minus 3x minus 4. X squared minus 1. Believe it or not, this one's going to be easy. Uh, I don't know about that. What? It might have holes. I will not know that until I do what? Factor it. So how does the top factor? X minus 4. Minus 4 plus, plus one, 1. Plus 1 minus yeah. 1. And plus 1 minus 1. Okay, for the first time since earlier in the year, we have a hole. So we're going to cancel out the thing that cancels, and we're going to rewrite our problem. Right? Right. And this is where I'm going to focus all my energy now. However, because I canceled, I'm going to have a hole, which is a point, an X and a Y. Where do you think the X is? Look what canceled out. Negative one. Look what canceled out, kids. That means the X is negative one. How do you think I'm going to find the Y? I'm gonna plug in negative one right here in the box. This is your problem now. This is where you plug everything. So if I plug in negative one, I'll have negative one minus four or over negative one minus one. So what's my numerator? I'm plugging in negative one. Negative five, negative two. So I got five halves. So before I forget, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna plot that point. Negative one, two and a half. That is my hole. Now notice I plotted it with an open circle or a hole, open circle. All right, now, look right here. This is where I want you to look at. What else can you tell me about that picture? This is an easy little equation. What else can you tell me about it? Horizontal asymptote is one. Horizontal asymptote is one. I know the horizontal asymptote is one, guys, because I have one X over one X. That's one. All right, what else do I know? I have a vertical asymptote at one for a different reason. 
the vertical asymptote is at one because that's what makes the denominator zero. All right, what else do I have? M intercepts. Remember, whichever intercept you're looking for, the other letter is zero. So if I want my y-intercept, I'm going to let x be zero. So come over here. What happens if you put zeros in for the x's? What do you get? You get four? Negative, yeah. negative, negative four negative over one. negative one? Four. You get four. So my y-intercept is four. <coughs> Now, how do I get x intercepts? Make the right here. Zero. Make the numerator zero. How do I make the numerator zero? What number? Four. four. Now we should be able to graph this now. On this side, here's my asymptotes. They're crossing right here. So I've got this quadrant right here and I got a couple of points. Can you see this, guys, right here? Yeah. With those two points being there, doesn't that make sense? What about over here? What's happening over here? Doesn't it look like that? That's easy. That was an easy one. If, if they only have one vertical asymptote, they usually do. It's the ones that have that space in the middle that things get a little crazy. All right, you want to try another one before we do our practice quiz? this last one here. All right, this is a big problem. But let's suppose this really is your quiz problem. It's pretty big. Well, let's suppose it's your quiz. What are you going to do? How are you even going to start it? You're going to start by factoring it. Good. And let's see. Can you factor any of it? Bottom would be um, x yeah. plus 3 and x plus 1. It would be. Thank you, Max. one and x minus three, Christina says, and she's exactly right. She's exactly right. Good work. What's the matter, Tyler? Why are you waving your hands around? Okay. Such a weird guy. So, so long ago. All right. Now, oh boy, what do you notice? There's a hole. And there, and there's something cancels. Is that what you were telling me, Zion? Yeah. Okay, that's what all that meant. I don't all right, so. I get it. I get no it. He was going, going like this, I guess, and telling me that I could cancel. So this now is going to become my problem. Oh, there's going to be a hole. There's going to be a hole. And the hole, look at what you canceled. The hole is going to have an X value of... Three. three. So the hole is going to have an x value of three. 
Now, how will I find the y value? Plug three in. Plug three in here. So if I put three in, I'm going to get seven over two. So I have a hole in my graph at three comma three and a half, three comma seven halves. I need my asymptotes. So where do I have asymptotes? Now remember kids, you're not looking anywhere but at the box. That's where you're looking. So you have one vertical asymptote and where is it? Where's your vertical? X equals one. And then look right here, this is how you find your horizontal. So what's your horizontal? Y equals two. What do we still need? We need our intercepts. So remember your intercepts, whichever one you're finding, the other letter is zero. So if we're doing the y-intercept, x is zero. If we're doing the x-intercept, y is zero. So let's let the x's be zero. If you put in x's, or excuse me, zeros for the x's, what do you end up with? Negative one. it's one over negative one if you put in zeros. What makes the numerator zero? What, uh, it's gonna be a fraction. What makes the top zero? Negative one half, so Dr. said when he's right. Kids, if you can't do it in your head, it's fine, but don't just sit there and stare. Figure it out. What makes the top zero? That's where your x-intercept is. Now, based on what I have drawn, you should be able to graph that. Can you connect the dots and get the shape you think it is? Showing back to a song like this, he's making a reciprocal function picture. And the fact that we have two dots right here kind of tells me, I think, it looks like that. Yeah, I think it looks like that. But that's only half. You need the other half of the picture. But you got a hole up here, right? So the other half is going to look like this. I don't have to plot any extra points or figure anything out because I had everything I needed to get the shape. All right, now let's try a couple on your own. Any question about this one? You got this one? All right, so here's the one I want you to try right now. Either right on the desk, um, or get, you know, pencil or something on paper. Let's 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 if you're writing on the desk, be sure you have an eraser. Make sure you have a rag if you're writing on the desk. I got my tongue wrong, dude. All right, here we go. Hey, don't throw, don't throw, don't throw. Let's go. Come on. We are sketching this. Now, the quiz, the quiz, and we'll do one, we'll do one uh, before we actually take the quiz. We'll do another one on a piece of paper. 
But it will be the whole side of a piece of paper. I'm just going to be a piece of paper that looks like this with one problem. Because I need you to fill all this in and draw the picture. So, I'm going to shut up. You're going to shut up. And fill in as much of this as you can. Right here. Fill in as much of this as you can. And then transfer it over to your picture and see if you can get it drawn. Where is it? You can do it on a different piece of paper or you can do it on your desk, whatever you want. Now, if we're Mason from now on, I want you to do Kleenex. I want you to go get a rag. Now, what are we not going to have in this problem? A hole. A hole. We're not going to have say a no? hole. No. Usually we say none, but no would be okay. There's no hole. Emma, how do I know without doing anything that there's not going to be a hole? You have the same sign. There's no cancel in here, right? There's not going to be any cancel in there. The only way you can have a hole is if you can cancel. You can take a two out, but that won't allow you to cancel. You can absolutely, if that helps you, you can absolutely factor the top. But factoring doesn't make holes. Holes are made by canceling. So I cannot cancel, so therefore, even though I can factor, there's no hole. But that helps with the, uh, the vertical aspect of the... No, it doesn't help with the vertical. It helps with the uh, x-intercept. helps with the x-intercept. So the horizontal axis asymptote that you have two? Okay. Two. Max thinks the horizontal asymptote is two because we have two x over one x. I think max is right again. Um, what right? Do you Horizontal asymptote is two. Yes, max. Tell you what, he gets a two on math lead, and all of a sudden he's on fire. Gives you a big shot now, doesn't it? Is that right? There's a number you put in there. Six is the highest score you can get. Uh, but yeah, most yeah, right most right get of the kids in my class normally get like zeros. So we when we get one or two, we're excited. Is he a leader right now? Um, Blake Lowe and uh, Isaac Michael. That's the crazy thing. Blake Lowe. So did you give them the paper and they've like already done it in a class? Mm -hmm. No. I feel like they just already know. Like they've already done the problems in the classes, however high up they are. Well, Isaac's only in pre-cal. He's a sophomore. Oh, wow. He's a sophomore in pre kill? Honors pre kill. I don't know. He's like a Don Quad. What are we doing? Because uh, he's like. I don't know uh, what to do with the. Uh, yeah, what well, that is. Isn't a Don Quad. No, isn't a. Isn't. Oh, wait, Nick Rose a junior, though. Yeah, he's a junior. Is he an independent study? Yeah. What's Don Quad? Is Don Quad independent? Or what? All right, what have you decided here? What have you decided? Vertical is one. Vertical asymptote is x equals one because that makes the denominator zero. How about your intercept? Did you get either one of those? Four comma zero for the x intercept. Now, if you didn't get that, you're not paying attention to what I have written down here. 
What makes the numerator zero is not four. That is not right. Negative two, thank you. I listened to someone I shouldn't have listened to. Negative two makes the numerator zero. What's the x intercept is four? The y intercept. Yeah, you have to, that's what I had. The negative y four. intercept is negative four. What? Yeah, I don't know how you can be confused. What makes a zero here? What would make that zero? Negative two. Right? I don't know what you're doing, but stop it because it's not right. What makes this zero? That's what you asked yourself. The y intercept is putting zeros in here. What? If you let x be zero, you get negative four. All right. I think we have everything all filled in now correctly. So did you connect the dots? Wait, how is it easy to give or to give? You should have gotten a shape that looked like this. Remember, the approach is asking go there. Oh, what about the other side? There's no points over there. What does that look like? Well, I mean, what do you think that looks like over here? Uh, nothing. It's right here. Don't ever say there's nothing. The only time there will be empty space is if your problem has a radical in it, and we're not there. So every section should be filled. Now, <laughs> earlier someone said to me, Mrs. Ford, how do you know that there's nothing up here? Well, let's pretend I put something up there. Okay. Would that pass the vertical line test? No. And these are all functions. So listen carefully. Your vertical asymptote is a fence. There will be one thing on the left of the fence, and there will be one thing on the right of the fence, and that's it. So here is my fence. We know for sure we have this done with the left side. There's only one picture on the left side. Then there must be a picture on the right side, and you're telling me it's this. And you're right. What is your logic? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking, well, it's a reciprocal thing? I think that's a good idea. Are you thinking, well, shoot, it couldn't look like this because it would cross? Good. That's another thought. However you're thinking about it, I don't care. The picture's up there. Got to get it up there. All right? And we'll do one more. And then tomorrow, or uh, what will it be? Wednesday? Wednesday, we'll have a quiz, but we'll practice one before we do it. So here's another potential quiz question. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Here we go. We're going to sketch this. So see how much of this you can get filled in. Don't talk. Don't talk. See how much of this you can get filled in. Probably a lot. Get moving because we want to be able to be done when it's time for school to be out. Otherwise, we'll stay here together for a little bit. Can you really do that? Yeah. No way. We're going to have a date. That's cheating. I got a detention for leaving okay, school at 3 11 before I tell a lot of the Christian values and going yeah. on a date. No, that's the most pointless detention ever. Couch. But Take and like my, and my couch have a date. Yeah, All right, I'm, what I'm, do we know for sure right off the bat? No holes. No holes. No holes. No holes. No holes. No holes. Now, you might have said, whoa, but Mrs. Ford, I can factor in the bottom. And you're right, you can. But you cannot cancel. So tell me what you know then from that. 
Um, the horizontal asymptote is one of it, it's half. It's a half. Would everybody agree that because we have x over 2x, uh, I, 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 our I horizontal agree. asymptote is a half? Yeah. All right, children? My x-intercept is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because what makes the numerator zero is five. What else? Okay, if you, if you put zero in for x, you're going to get five six. So your y intercept is five six. We put a zero in, so that negative over negative, positive five six. Yeah, because that two is still there. So it'd be negative five over two times negative three. It's still five six. There's only one y intercept. The vertical, the vertical is, uh, I forgot to find the vertical. I don't know how you say that when it's written right here. Um, so the number of touch, uh, the, the bottom one? Three. The vertical oh. asymptote is x equals three. Uh, we got it all. So based on this, can we draw our picture? Yes. I don't know what it is though. Won't it look like this on this side? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, from the file. And this on this side? Nothing tricky or fancy about that one. That's straight old <laughs> reciprocal function. Right? So I would suggest that's 2 6. 2 6 is done. So I would suggest that maybe you take a look at the 2 6 homework. Oh, I am going to give you a few papers I have. Are you passing back the. I also have a worksheet.